Howdy folks, my name is Richie aka Bogart, and I'm back with another Hearthstone deck guide. The basic deck guides I did for the nine classes were ideal for beginners, but in this video I'm going to craft a budget mage deck that should perform even better. When designing this deck, I had two goals in mind. The first was I wanted it to cost around 1000 arcane dust. The second was I wanted to make an aggro mage deck, not a control deck that sits back with a lot of freezes. So 1,000 Arcane Dust, that may actually sound like a lot, but it's not when you consider that if I include any Epics in this deck, those would be 400 Dust per one card. And if I included any Legendaries, that would be 1,600 Dust for one card. So we don't have any Legendaries or Epics in this. And if you do purchase the cards to make this deck, you're going to see a lot of commons and some rares. There are a lot of very, uh, very good generic cards that can fit into a lot of different decks like Dark Iron Dwarves, Azure Drakes, Argent Commanders, Harvest Golem. So a lot of these things that I'm uh, asking you to, to purchase or craft for this deck will be useful in a lot of other decks as well. So let's look at what the deck has and then we'll show you some uh, actual gameplay with this deck. Okay, let's look at the deck. And if you are familiar with the basic mage deck that I crafted, I kept some of the structure in place so you can see some remnants of it. One of the cards I kept was Arcane Missiles. This is a card uh, that is good in the early game, and it's probably not something you want to play on turn one unless the opponent is already gone and put something on the board. Um, I have found that you can use this to snipe out some early creatures like Loot Hoarders or the token, the 1-1 one -one tokens from the Paladin, and it's also always great when you can get some kind of uh, impact out of Arcane Missiles. Mana Worm it combos really well with arcane missiles that's kind of why i kept it mana worm is one of the cards you'll have to purchase they will it's a common card so it will cost 40 dust per mana worm and uh, this spell is just brutal if you can get this out on turn one with the mage and uh, let's say you're going second you have the coin you use the coin and uh, actually bring out arcane missiles right after that well then suddenly your mana worm is three three because the coin counts as a spell and you've just spent one mana on that so you get a lot of value and a beefy creature and these guys can be devastating if uh, the opponent doesn't deal with them quickly we're going to keep two frost bolts in the deck that uh, those are base, basic cards, and it's pretty easy to see why three damage and freezing targets is very good for two mana. Okay, knife jugglers are our first rares. I put two of them in the deck. Now, if you don't have a lot of dust and you want to make this a little bit more budgety, um, this deck, by the way, will cost 1,040 dust to craft the whole thing just as I is, uh, have it here. But if you want to save 200 dust on these knife jugglers, just go ahead and put swamp boozes in. Obviously, it's not as good. But, uh, you know, you probably won't notice much of an impact. Knife Juggler is one of the best two drops, if not the best two drop in the game. It's a 3-2 creature, which is, you know, the stats that you want, the same as the Swamp Ooze. But after you summon a minion, it deals one damage to a random enemy, and it can quickly get out of control if people don't deal with it. Loot Hoarder has replaced Novice Engineers in a lot of my decks. Novice Engineers took that nerf, and they are one health uh, less. It's still an okay card, but Loot Hoarder is better. Um, I can bring them out. They actually have some impact in the early game. Uh, they can actually take out some creatures that have come out on turn one, turn two, um, and uh, they will draw a card when it dies. The uh, So the loot order goes in the deck, and it's pretty awesome. If you checked out my basic training video on card advantage, you know why card draw is so important, but it helps your deck become more consistent. It helps you get the cards in your hand that you need at the time that you need them. The Harvest Golem is an excellent card, but he's got a subtle power to him. He doesn't seem like flashy and sexy, but deep down he is a very powerful card. And the power comes in the fact that he put him out and he's a 2-3 creature, which is alright. But when he dies, he actually brings out a 2-1 creature. Which means that it's much more likely that come around your next turn that you're still going to have a creature alive on the board. Now the reason why that's important is we're going to show you other cards later on that actually buff your cards that are already in play. And a Shattered Sun Cleric or a Dark Iron Dwarf, if you use those on the Damage Golem, then you actually are able to kill things that are more powerful than the Damage Golem. And you get that all for three mana on one card. So it, it's not like a, a game-winning card necessarily, but it really sets up the tempo and the pace of the game. It kind of upsets that balance of you play a creature, the opponent removes it, you play a creature, the opponent trades, and this is, oh, I, I just traded or used your removal spell, but I got something else on the board now, and it can kind of, you know, really turn the game into your favor. 
Raging Worgen is another one you'll have to purchase. That's common, 40 dust to craft him. The Raging Worgen is fun in a mage deck. And the reason why is because you can ping him yourself if need be in certain situations. And if you damage him with your hero power, then he will become a fourth. He'll become a 4-2 with Wind Fury, meaning he can attack twice in the turn. And that could do eight damage to the opponent if they're really low in life, or it could, ki you know kill one creature and then kill a second one depending on you know what the situation is on the board and uh yeah so uh keep that in mind that you probably don't want to ping them right away when you put them out there just put them out there as normal and then when you need it you can actually hurt the the raging worgen so they go in it's great it's a great turn three play shattered sun cleric uh is a is a leftover from the basic card deck it's still so good being able to give another friendly minion that's already on the board, plus one, plus one, something that's already there and can attack immediately and trade up. Um, so your turn two creature now is is much better and more relevant than it was last turn because of the plus one, plus one. It also combos really great with a Raging Worgen who's damaged and can now do even more damage. Fireballs are a no-brainer. Deal six damage for four mana. They go in. I put one Polymorph in the deck. You want to save it for something really beefy that you don't have another answer for. Okay, I don't. I didn't want to have two of them in your deck. I find if you have two of them in your deck and you have two of the polymorphs in your hand, it's just it, it's a it's just very slow, you know, to be able to use those, and it's hard to actually come back from being behind when you're when you're sitting there with too many polymorphs. So one emergency polymorph goes into this deck. Chillwind Yetis, love these guys. Four five, uh, they have a whole lot of stats for four mana. I put two of them in the deck. Dark Iron Dwarf, this is one of the better uh, four drops in the game. It allows you, kind of like the Shattered Sun Cleric, um, to trade up, right? You play this on something that was already in play. Okay, let's say I have a Raging Worgen. He's 3-3. Three, three. All right, now I put the Dark Iron Dwarf, and now he's 5-3 just for this turn. But now he can trade and kill something that's much more powerful than it, which is awesome. So two Dark Iron Dwarfs go in the deck. Azure Drake are two rare cards. So it would be, you know, 100 uh, dust each to craft these. Uh, however, this card just does a whole lot. Okay, you got 4-4 four, four for 5 mana, which is not the best stats. Uh, you know, you can get 4-4 four, four for 4 mana here. But you're gaining your card back, which is awesome. And spell damage plus 1 in a mage deck can come in handy. It makes your fireballs more powerful, makes your frost bolts more powerful, your arcane missiles, and your flame strikes. So uh, the Azure Drake is just pretty awesome all around. We're going to throw one Venture Company Mercenary in this deck. Since we're going for an aggro mage, we want to come out there with creatures. We want to we want to have a lot of early creatures that come out and do a whole bunch of different fun things. We want to buff them up with the Shadow Sun Cleric. We want to buff them up with the Dark Iron Dwarf. And the Venture Company Mercenary comes out for 5 mana. And he's 7-6. He's a whole bunch of stats. And that, that uh, downside, your minions cost 3 more, isn't much of a downside in practice. There are certain situations where they can... Like a, a paladin can cast, uh, um, what is it, the Aldori Peacekeeper or uh, the Aldor Peacekeeper and actually make make it so your Venture Company Mercenary is a 1-6 and now you're kind of caught with this disadvantage. But uh, most of the time this stuff comes out and the opponent has to either me immediately deal with it or they're going to get their face chewed off by this guy. So I like having at least one of these guys in the deck. Argent Commander is another big staple card. This is a rare card, but people love playing these. They're very powerful in a lot of different decks. Uh, they are 4-2. They can immediately charge, and they have Divine Shield. So most of the time, what happens is you're taking two creatures out, and it can have an immediate effect on the board. You don't have to wait till next turn to actually use it. Argent Commanders are awesome. And we're going to put two Flame Strikes in the deck. These are AoE board-clearing things. You want to at least get a two-for-one out of it, maybe a three-for-one or a four-for-one, something crazy like that. Card advantage, card advantage, card advantage. Now, as you can see, this is not built to actually do much in the end game, right? We don't have a whole bunch of really big, fat creatures or anything like that at the end. We want to just dominate the board in the early game, use your removal to get rid of creatures, and constantly buff your own creatures up and keep control of the board. I'm going to show you a couple of matches to show you how it's done, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, we start off our first match against Kevin the Druid. Now here I have a 3-4-5 hand, which isn't horrible, but I'd rather have a 2-3-4. So I'm going to get rid of the Azure Drake and see how this uh, turns out. And that I prefer what I had before, I, w I think. <laughs> All right, we're not going to be able to do anything until turn three if this keeps up. I hope you 
All right, he brought a novice engineer. He draws a card. At least I have something to ping this turn. So this is a very slow start. Okay, good thing my opponent is also having a slow start, just hero powering. All right, we'll bring out a worgen. And he's just going to take it out. All right, we'll move up to the Yeti now. Hopefully he can't take this out. All right, we're going to smash the Harvest Golem and... Still got a 2-1 there, but I can do a Worgen and ping it, which is pretty efficient use of my mana. Okay, he's going to swipe. He couldn't swipe to take out the Yeti, because then he would have made my Worgen more powerful. All right, Innervate, he's going to do more on this turn. Mad Bomber trying to kill the Yeti. And no, does not succeed. Oh, he's going to innervate again. Savage Roar. Okay, my opponent used a lot of cards that turn just to try to take out the Yeti. You can see... You can see I have a lot of cards. He doesn't. And I'm just going to Argent Commander right into his minion. Take it out. Not lose a creature myself. Okay, I'm just trying to keep control of the board, trade as efficiently as I can, and you can see what happened to the number of cards in his hand. I have the distinct advantage here. Hmm. Alright, we'll ping the loot hoarder, get rid of it. I'm going to play the Venture Co. here. I was thinking about the Azure Drake. Venture Co. is just bigger threat. Let's just finish this game. All right, he's going to swipe. Another loot hoarder. All right, well, we can ping the loot hoarder away and cast an expensive... Shattered Sun Cleric to buff my Mercenary, and then we're going to swing for eight. And this is basically over. All right, he's got a Yeti. All right, he's putting Taunt on it. Okay. Alright, well, we can polymorph that. Take away the threat. Alright, we'll take the sheep out. I don't want him, like, buffing it or anything like that. Hit. Next turn should be the kill. Alright, he's drawing cards. That's too little, too late. He's only got two mana left, so... Alright, he's putting the taunt on it. Alright, we'll just flame strike and then use one of my creatures to take it out. And there we can still be the eight points. Game one is done. Okay, this time we're facing a hunter. That's a coup. All right, Mana Worm's great in the opening hand. Arcane Missiles as well. I'm going to get rid of the other two. Oh, we got a second Mana Worm. And the coin, because we're going second. Oh, this is going to be a brutal start. Hello. Hello. 
This will be a good example to show you how the mana worms can really get out of control, hopefully. Oh, he just used his hero power. Nice. Okay, I'm going to mana worm here. And then I'm going to coin into the loot hoarder. I could have used arcane missiles if he put a creature out there, but I think this is the better play. I buff both my mana worms up. The loot hoarder comes down. Now suddenly on turn two, I have a pretty impressive board. He's bringing down a buzzard, okay. And a boar. All right, he's going to be able to take out my loot hoarder, and he draws a card. So that's not terrible, but it's not going to be able to deal with my mana worms at the moment. All right, now, now we get to play the arcane missiles and hope it kills the buzzard. Watch this, it buffs both my creatures. Yes! And we took it out. Alright, we have two three threes. And I can ping. He's down to 19 on turn three, on my turn three. Now, if he doesn't have the answer here, this game's over. He does have the answer, the perfect answer, actually. Moldy shot, he gets rid of both of them. Okay, well, I still did a lot early game. Hopefully, uh, we can keep this momentum up. Here's a Yeti, that's hard to deal with, too. All right, Scavenging Hyena. Oh, Kill Command. Okay. Well, that's a good way to take out the Yeti, I guess. We'll do the Worgen. And Fire Blast. I did the Fire Blast on the Hyena there to give myself more options next turn. Maybe I want to ping it to death next turn instead of... Uh, doing something else. Oh, he's getting rid of my worgen again with kill command. And I have a creature left on the board so I can play Shattered Sun Cleric or Dark Iron Dwarf, please? Please? Alright, I guess we'll put down the Azure Drake and get a card. Job's done. Argent Commander's nice. Okay, he made his Hyena beefy. Put out another one. Alright, he traded there. Alright, it's easy to see what to play. Flame strike, three for one. Suddenly, my opponent has a few cards. Okay, the Rhino allows all of his other beasts to charge, so I kind of want to get rid of this. So I'm going to Frostbolt it, and we're going to Argent Commander right into it. Okay, big gorilla. And taunt again. Alright, I want to put this game out of reach of him. I'm gonna i I'm gonna just take quick care of all the threats. Probably should have killed the sheep there. I was running out of time. Ah, oh, look at that. Stupid sheep. Right, let's load the board up. Hopefully we get the wolf with one of the knives. Yes. And we'll buff up the worgen. You must cleanse the sun well. Ping. Multi shot. Ah, but he buffed up my uh, my worg in there. 
Okay, with the Dark Iron Dwarf, the Worgen can put this game away. Right now. Do 14 damage, just the Worgen. Wind Fury. And that's it. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this budget mage deck guide. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and make a comment before you go. That really helps me out. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter at the addresses on the screen. Subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. And if you click on that video that's playing there, that is my basic training Hearthstone video on card advantage. And if you click on that little Jaina underneath there, that is my basic mage deck for beginners. Hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Take care.